Hey, I don't know about this rapture business. Well, what about <coughs> death? Do you know about that? There are people that are dead today that yesterday thought they had their whole life in front of them. Amen. You ain't no different. Amen? Amen? I ain't no different. I'm not sure I have a tomorrow. But if I do have one, I intend to live it for Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm not sure I have two more days, but if I do, I intend to live for Jesus those two days. Amen? And so on and so on. <clears throat> Remember what we preached last Sunday? Help wanted. Yeah. Now hiring all positions. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to pick up where we left off last week. I'm getting so long winded, Sister yeah. Cindy. It's taken me two or three weeks to finish my sermon. Mm -hmm. That's okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> I usually find myself thinking, well, I guess we better finish that up next week. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But if you'll turn in your King James Version this morning to Matthew, the ninth chapter. And we started in the 35th verse, Matthew 9 and 35. And we talked about how that Jesus, when He went from city to city and town to town and village to village, ministry. My, 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 can you imagine? Can you imagine all of the miracles that had taken place and all of the things that had happened? Can you imagine hearing somebody say, hey, Jesus is coming to Capernaum. Jesus is coming through Judea. Jesus is coming by our way. That's how a lot of people in the Bible got their healing. Because they heard Jesus was going to be passing by. And when they heard Jesus was going to be passing by, they started crying out. Amen. Was it blind Bartimaeus that cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. And they told him, they said, oh, you old blind fool, shut up. And instead of shutting up, the Bible says he cried even the more. He cried even the more. Amen. He cried aloud even more. Hallelujah. So Jesus is going from place to place, ministry. And we find here in Matthew, the ninth chapter, the 35th verse. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues. Jesus went to church. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Jesus went to church Amen. and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion. He said, the Bible says he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted, Brother Bill, because they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd Amen. now many times we look at the religious mess that's going on today and the power of positive thinking and the word of faith and the name it and claim it and the I'm a little God and all that stuff we've talked about a dozen times or more but we look at those things and sometimes we feel sort of an anger I don't know about anybody else but I sort of feel like I, I, see, I feel a little <clears throat> bit of an anger maybe sometimes and I ain't saying that God never gets angry. He doesn't get angry in the sense that we get angry. We get angry in our flesh. His anger is righteous. Amen? Amen? His anger is righteous. Yours generally ain't. Uh-oh. Yours generally ain't. You'd be hard-pressed this morning to find a time you got mad and it was okay with God. My goodness. Amen? Amen? That hissy fit you through this morning, that wasn't okay with God. Amen? You being mad at your neighbor, that ain't okay with God. You being mad at your brother. Somebody wrote me a letter this week and they were talking about their Thanksgiving get-together and they said, we can't have one. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can't have one. Mm -hmm. Because even though our family's not big, they can't get along. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to have either. Some of these, they said, well, if they're coming, I ain't coming. Oh, I've heard some of that stuff before. Ain't you, Sister Nancy? Yeah. <laughs> Our family ain't that big, but I wrote them back and said, hey, you ain't alone, amen? We have those kind of things too. The Bible says if you can't love your brother who you have seen, how in the world can you say that you love God who you've not, who you've not seen? How do you know you may not like what's some of God's attributes? Sometimes you know we don't like people because of their, their demeanor or the way they act. Well, maybe you don't like God, amen? Somehow we got to find it in ourselves to love people huh, whether we like them or not, amen? we got to find it in ourselves to get along. 
I ain't saying that God never gets anger because He does. His is righteous anger, ours ain't. But more times than not, Brother Beal, He's not moved with anger. He's moved with compassion and love toward those that are scattered abroad and have no shepherd. And we've got that in the church today. Too. Amen. Oh, we've got motivational speakers, but we've got no shepherds. We've got best-selling authors, Brother Sleeves, but we've got no shepherds. We've got entertainers. We've got big stars, but we've got no shepherds. Amen. Amen. Go to one of these mega churches, and if you're sick and you're in the hospital, see who comes and visits you. It won't be the best-selling author that takes the platform every morning and tells you how to have your best life now. It'll be one of the associates. Come on. Amen. Amen. The, sh the, sh the sheepfold is too big when the shepherd can't see to the ailments of the sheep. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's too big whenever you have to have all of these little shepherds. Amen. It's too big. <clears throat> and Jesus, when He saw these people that were hurting, and He saw that they were in need, the Bible says He was moved with compassion. And I told you last Sunday, and I tell you this morning, this is one of the saddest statements, I think, in all of the Word of God. The Bible says that Jesus then turns to His disciples and He says this in verse 37. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that He will send forth laborers into His harvest. I told you last week, God's house is full. There's an old song that says, My house is full, but my fields are empty. Amen? No one wants to go and work. Or maybe the song says, who will go and work for me today? Everybody wants to sit around and eat at the Father's table, but nobody wants to do any work. Oh, that was true in Jesus' day. That's true today as God looks across the harvest fields and He sees that the harvest is plenteous. The souls are many, but the laborers are few. Why? Because we're so wrapped up, tied up, and tangled all up in the things of the world. We don't care if people go to hell. Right. Amen? We're not concerned enough with the fact that millions are going to hell every day while the church stands around idle doing nothing. Amen? Oh, we've got our cliques and our drama teams and we've got our boards and we've got our planks and we've got our little meetings and our little subgroups and our subcommittees and we got all of this mess going on while people die and go to hell outside the walls of the church and the church can care less because she's so earthly minded. She has become no heavenly good to God and the work and the field is still full of the harvest today and there's very few workers that are willing to do anything for God Amen. most people feel put upon or put out if they have to do anything for God if I have to help my brother that's in need well I sure wish somebody else would do it well what's wrong with you amen amen What's wrong with you? What, where did we get past the point of saying, Lord, what would you have? Like Paul, whenever he was smacked down on the road to Damascus, what happened this morning? How, how would, where did we ever pass the point where he said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Oh, I wish we could get a church full of people today that would spend some time on their knees during the week saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? Yeah. Instead of trying to push everything off from everybody else. Amen. Amen. Oh, that'll preach this morning. Amen. Instead of, and Jesus says, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. John 4 and 34, going along the same lines. John, the fourth chapter, the 34th verse. I'm going to try to hurry because I've got something else to give you this morning than I gave you last week. John 4 and 34 says, Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of Him that sent me and to finish His work. Did you hear that? They were worried about what they were going to eat, how they were going, what they were going, to, how they were going to satisfy their hunger. And Jesus said, My hunger, that which satisfies me, that which fills me, is to do the will of the Father, the One that sent me. And he says to him, Say not ye, 
There are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. He's talking about in a planting, in a reaping and sowing example. When you go out to the field and you plant a seed, then you say, well, you know, come September, we'll go back out four months from now or however long, and we'll get the crop that comes from that seed. So Jesus is telling them, if you're standing around and waiting for the harvest to get ready, Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. I know a boy can preach up a, I mean, he can preach. But he's, and he's been able to. I, I've known him for 20 years. And he's been a good, he's a good preacher. But he's still waiting. He's just waiting on God's timing. Been called to preach for 20 years or longer. Can preach up a storm. Still waiting on God. I think that ship done sailed. Amen? Amen? God's waiting on you. Amen? It's time for us to get up away from the table and to say, well, you know what? I've got my stomach full. I've got my belly full. I'm full now. Now I'm going to step outside of the doors, go walk out in the fields and do some work for a change. Amen? I want you to come in here on Sunday morning and get fed. I want, and if you don't, then you need to go somewhere where you can get fed. Amen? Because I'm doing everything I can do to feed you. Amen? Amen. I want you to get fed when you come in here. But I don't want you to just go home and take a nap in the spirit. Amen. You know how we do sometimes? We'll have Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, I gotta go lay down. Amen. Well, Brother Bill, we'll come to church and we'll get fed and oh, we'll get blessed and the word is blessing us and into the spirit we'll be like, well, time for my nap. Yeah. No, it ain't time for your nap. It's time for you to take that food, that energy that that food has, has transformed into and go outside of the walls and be a witness for Jesus and let somebody know that there is a hope in what seems like a hopeless world. That there is still love in what seems like a loveless world this morning. Amen. Time to get up. we got enough spiritual couch potatoes. Amen. Amen. The couch is full. They ain't no place no more. Amen. The couches are full. We got too many spectators this morning. Amen. We need some participators this morning. We need somebody that's willing to do something for Jesus. That's why we said last week, help on it. Now high in all positions. You say, I can't preach. Hey, there's a million jobs beside preaching. I can't sing. Yeah, but there's a million jobs beside singing. I asked you last week, I asked you this morning, can you pray? Amen. Can you pray? Every one of us can pray. Amen. That's the kind of positions we're needing filled. We're needing people that'll pray. Let me ask you this, and this is a this is a, a good question considering the response I got this morning when I asked if anybody had any prayer requests. <clears throat> can you request prayer for somebody? Well. Is it too, or is it just too much of a burden for you? Are you just so tired and wore out and sick you can't say, hey, pray for my family because I got news for you. Nobody else may not be requesting prayer for them this morning. Amen. I don't know of anybody else. Amen. I don't know for a certain that somebody else is requesting prayer for them. So you better get them out there and say, hey, pray for my mama. Pray for my daddy. Pray for my brother. Pray for my sister. Hey, I know somebody that's got cancer. Pray for them. I know somebody that's lost and undone without God and on their way to hell. Pray for them this morning. Somebody needs to stand up and be a prayer warrior in the day that we live in. And will take the needs of people before God. And will seek the old-fashioned altar and wet it with tears and say, God, save this generation that's lost and undone and on their way to hell. Stir up the hearts of your people that seem so lackadaisical that they could care less. Amen. Amen. I told you last Sunday this is a passion of mine. Amen. I don't stay up till 2 o'clock in the morning working on the newsletter because, whoa, this is really enjoyable. Amen? I don't spend all my time doing radio work and CDs and cassettes and all the other things we do because I think, you know, I just don't have nothing else to do. This is so enjoyable and I love it, which I do love it, don't get me wrong. But I do these things because there is a passion and a burning, a desire inside of me to work in the field because Jesus said the night soon cometh when no man will be able to work. That's why there's such an urgency in the Spirit this morning, Brother Bill, for us to pray, God, send laborers, send me to get the work done in these last days. Amen. Because we're running out of time. We're running out of time. Amen. And I ain't going to ask you this morning how much time you wasted already. There used to be a song somebody used to sing, Wasted years, wasted years. Oh, how foolish. 
We've wasted a little time, church. Amen. The harvest. You know what happens? I told you this last week. You know what happens to a harvest if nobody goes out and reaps? It rots. It goes bad. That's what's happening to the souls of man today. The souls of man are rotten on the vine. While we stand around saying, well, I just I can't do nothing. I can't do anything. There ain't nothing I can do. There's really just nothing for me to do. You liar. You've used that excuse long enough. There's something for every one of us to do. I told you this last week. i tell you this again today. When I was a teenager, barely, worked in tobacco field. <clears throat> Told you last Sunday, I did it then because I didn't know no better, but I won't do it now because I know better now. <laughs> Ain't going to help kill nobody. But when I went out there, Brother Bill, and I was little, I was probably fat, but I was young. <laughs> I couldn't do all the jobs. Never had spike before, never had cut it before, <clears throat> but I could drop the sticks. Mm -hmm. Amen. There were people dropping sticks. There were people cutting it. There were people spiking it. There were people picking it up, packing it to the wagon and putting it on there. And you don't have to use that example. You can, you've seen it. In, I don't, you, may, you may be old enough to have seen this yourself. Now we've got big machines. But used to in the field, somebody would have a stick and they'd poke a hole. Mm -hmm. Somebody would come along behind them and they'd drop a seed in. Somebody would come along behind them and they'd cover it up. All kinds of jobs. Time for you to get off the couch. And quit saying, ain't nothing I can do. Amen? I seen a little fella didn't have no legs. Pushing himself around on a skateboard. Singing the gospel. Now how many of us, Brother Bill, would say, I ain't got no legs, I can't do nothing for Jesus. <coughs> Amen? I can't do anything for Jesus. Oh yes, you can. There are people that you can reach that are your responsibility to reach that can't nobody else reach them. Your witness, your life, your living testimony may be the difference between them going to heaven and them going to hell. I don't work with the people you work with every week. I can't be the light to them. You're sent there to be that light. You think you got that job just so you can pay for your satellite and your bass boat, but Jesus sent you there to be a light in the midst of it. Oh, I could preach that this morning. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I ain't always just worked in ministry. I've worked in the public too. And I'm telling you, there are few, the lights out there are few and far between. Amen? Yeah. Because even those people that go to church on Sunday morning, they cuss and tell the same old dirty jokes that their, their friends do at the workplace on Monday morning. Amen? Yeah. God's looking for somebody to send into the places where there needs to be a light shown. There's no light being shown there. And He has sent you there to let your light shine. No matter where you work, Maybe the store you shop at. You think you shop, and I know y'all looking at me like I fell out well, but I, frankly, I don't care. You go to that store because you think they got cheaper price on weenies. You don't understand that God ordained your footsteps that you would shop at that store so that you could be a light to the cashier, so that you could be a light to the boy who does the bagging, so that you could be a light to the stock boy that's putting the food on the shelves. Not so that you can go in there and complain about the price. Wow. Not so that you can go in there and complain about how long the line is. My goodness, Brother Bill. Not so that you can go in there and throw your little Pentecostal, I'm saved, but don't bother me. Fit that you throw sometimes. Amen. Yeah. God sent you in there to show the love of Jesus to those lost and dying people so they'll see something in you that they don't have. Yeah. And they'll want it. And they'll want it. Sometimes they see something in you they don't want. That's Amen. right. Amen. 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 So can you be a light today? Oh, yes, you can. To the people that you go and pay the light bill, the people you go and pay the water bill, the people that you go and buy their stuff at the store. Amen. Amen. You can be a light. My goodness, unless you put your light out. And that's what will happen. You keep hiding it. Sooner or later, you're going to hide your light for so long, you ain't going to have no light lit. Jesus is looking for people that are going to the field, and there's all kinds of jobs to be done. 
Jesus said, let your light so shine before men so that they'll see your works, your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You can do that. You can do that, Sister Nancy. Amen. You can be a light today. Every one of us, and if you missed out on a lot of it because I'm moving on, go get the CD from last week. You, there's a job for you to do. Another example, assembly line. This guy here, he does something, he sends it on down, and it gets worked on by somebody else. He sends it on down as somebody else that's you know maybe more of an expert than the other guy in a certain place that he's working on the line. He'll do something. But if one job on that assembly line gets missed, the, f the finished product is messed up. <laughs> Amen. When I worked at the tire treading place in Oldsboro, they'd send those old tires in there, you know, they'd have nails in them. And you'd have to take, you'd have to grind that place out, Brother Bill. You'd have to get the nail out, get the rust out, whatever it was there, and you'd have to grind it out. After you got all the rust and everything ground out of there, you'd send it on to the next guy. And he'd do some cleaning and he'd do this. They'd sit on the next guy. He'd take this rubber gun, what I call it, and he'd put this hot rubber in there and fill that hole up. They'd send it on down. They'd put some glue on top of it and stretch this rubber around it. Put it in the oven and bake it. Everybody had something to do. You got something to do this morning. It's time for you to quit saying I can't do nothing and do something. Amen. It's time for God's people to realize that the harvest is rotting on the vine while we sit inside the Father's house with our feet kicked up and eating everything we can get our hands on and just enjoying the fellowship of the Father. I enjoy the fellowship of the Father. Amen. I enjoy eating at the table, but there is a work to be done. And Jesus said the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. So we see this morning... How that all of that, all of the working and all of that ties in to what we're doing. I want to move on this morning so that we can finish up. I want to talk to you this morning about the way that Paul explained this. Now don't get me wrong, Paul talked about planting and sowing because he said one plants, another waters. God gives the increase. So, But we see how this morning and last week how that the church should be full of workers. Amen. Amen. When you call a prayer meeting, there should be as many people at prayer meeting as there is the dinner you had. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Because we need people who will pray. If you can't do nothing else, you can pray. If you've excused yourself out of every job that there has been, well, you know I can't. My back hurts. My legs hurt. My side hurts. My ears hurt. My eyes hurt. My neck hurts. Every place I got's hurting. Can you pray? Does your mouth hurt so bad that you can't, it don't hurt you too bad to get on the phone and gossip? How bad would it hurt you? I, I know you may not be able to get down on your knees. But you don't have to get on your knees to pray. You can pray right where you're at and say, Lord, save them. Let me be a light to show somebody the way to you. So there's plenty of jobs for you to do. Amen? I want to talk to you this morning about how Paul compares us to a body. Amen? And the name of today's sermon, Brother Rodney, if you want to write it down, is Unwanted Body Parts. <clears throat> How many people this morning would like to get rid? Now I ain't talking about your fat or your stretch marks. I'm talking about the members of your body. If I ask you this morning, how many of you want to part with a thumb? Would I have any volunteers? If I asked you this morning, how many people want to part with an ear? Would I have any volunteers? If I asked you this morning, how many people want to part with a toe? Something as small as a toe. Do you want to part with your toe? How about your pinky? You know, you can get along without him. Surely you can use. Surely he's not that significant that you can't. How many people want to give me your pinky this morning? <laughs> Nobody. But we treat people in the body of Christ like they're dispensable. Anytime. Amen. Amen. Did you hear that? Yeah. We treat people like they ain't as important. We don't treat our body parts like that. We get a splinter in this pinky. We sow it as much attention as we would if we got it in our thumb or one of the other fingers. Amen. Amen. When I got that piece of wood in my hand, I didn't say, well, I don't need it. 
I just cut it off. No. Mm -hmm. Made me realize even more how much more I needed it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so this morning we've got, we've got a church that is all ready sometimes to just cut a member off. But you didn't want to do that this morning with your hand. Amen. Paul is going to show us in the Word how that we are the ones that are born again believers. We are the body of Christ. If, and Jesus is the head, so don't you go get puffed up thinking you're the head part of the body. Amen. <laughs> Jesus is the head, and the rest of us, we make up all of the rest of the body. Let's look how Paul said it. He said it much better than I could. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 11. Go with me this morning, and I'm trying to hurry. I know you thought since it was so quiet during worship service that we well, really probably won't preach very long. But I remember something Brother Hinton used to say. He used to say to the Bill, Oh, I like to sow seed while it's quiet. Mm -hmm. Amen. How many people know if you go out to the field and you're going to plant, you don't want the wind blowing? <clears throat> you don't want no thunder? You don't want no lightning? You want it quiet. Oh, it's quiet in here this morning. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Amen. Listen to this. Paul, Ephesians 4 and 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now he ain't talking about the body of Jesus that hung on the cross. He's talking about you. Amen? For the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man. See, the church is supposed to grow up. Amen? Amen. You are supposed to grow up. How would I look this morning if every place on my body got 45 years old but my nose stayed the same size as it was when I was born? How about my ears on this great big head? Ears the size of a little hunter that was here Tuesday night. Something would look deformed, wouldn't it? <clears throat> Not that I don't look deformed already. But something would be wrong with the body. That's the way it is. We got some of the members growing and other parts of the body still the same size they was when they came out. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We're supposed to grow up. Yeah. It's supposed to take more to make you mad today than it did <clears throat> when you first got saved. Oh, yeah. oh I could preach this morning. I'm going to get my license one of these days. Hallelujah. I said it'll take more to get you mad today than it used to. Because you ain't supposed to be wearing the same old soul diapers you used to wear. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to grow up. Mm -hmm. It ought to take more for me to hurt your feelings today than it used to. Mm -hmm. Amen. We ain't supposed to be like this. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. We ain't supposed to be sucking the nipple. After a time, you got to move on to some meat. What would you think this morning if I was up here preaching and I said, hold on a minute, and I picked up a baby bottle <coughs> in my drink? <coughs> yeah, maybe something wrong with him. Well, we got Christians that waddled into church this morning with their smelly diapers and sucking on their passy. And if the preacher took it away, they got mad and left. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. my, 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 my. Paul, what do you got me into now? He said there is a growing up. Amen. <laughs> <clears throat> until we unto the measure the perfect man unto the measure of the stature the fullness of Christ verse 14 that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro so you got to get a foundation I realize there's a lot of things that people disagree on I realize there are a lot of things that maybe you've been taught that now you're learning that is better. I've been there. I've done that. Amen. And probably going to be doing some more of it. There are things that I was taught. And not because they did it intentionally. They really believed and were sincere with what they believed. But there were things that I were taught that I'm finding out now there ain't a whole lot of word to back up. Amen. But my foundation is strong enough that my faith in Jesus is not going to sway. That my faith in His blood is not going to be deterred. That I'm not going to be shaken this morning in my faith as far as my salvation goes. Right. Amen. Because listen, we may disagree on a lot of things. We may not see the eye on several things, Brother Bill. But I know that I know 
that there is no gray area when it comes to salvation. Amen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by Me. So that ain't going to change. 